Sunday, 4th of March 2012. Yesterday you saw us taking off the underneath over the actual chassis leg. That's now gone. We've cleaned it up under there. So that's ready. We're going to put some Q rust underneath there. We'll be upgrading to gel light soon, but for now it's Q rust. But just cleaning up the, the new chassis leg. We're going to treat that before it goes on with the rust killer. And then we're going to con uh, salt with the. We've got the measurements here, courtesy of Jupiter Red Mark 4 off the forum. He sent me these sheets. The measurements of the chassis legs. There's your. You can see the. There's the chassis legs there. This is the back of the car. So our first one to get measurement to take is from that middle of that chassis leg to that one. So I'll put the chassis underneath and then those two centre holes which is the hole here. It's that one. So we'll put this, slide that underneath, tape measure across to that chassis which is untouched of course, stretch the tape across, get that measurement which looks like 890, 890 mil. 890 plus or minus 2 mil, so that's fine, but underneath we go. We'll get it lined up there, then clamp it in position. We'll get one tack on there. Then we'll twist the back of the chassis leg, which will be coming out here, until it's the right width. And then that's it, that's your measurements done. We'll uh, mock it up on the axle as well, and reattach the axle. And just to see how it all fits. And that'll be that done, no problem with that. The next job would be to uh, finish all the welds and then we'll start cleaning up this and getting the uh, boot off and we'll move around and get that tub off and um, attach this tub. So that's the jobs for today. Alright, an update for you. Just um, waiting for that curios to go off as you can see. the. The uh, chassis leg now is cleaned up. We've given that a rust kill. So you can see that's clean. Give it a wire brush and a rust kill. But what I'm doing in the meantime is we brought the shelf out. Now you'll see now why we went to so much trouble unpicking carefully the shelf rather than just butchering it off. It's a scrap shelf, but it's getting used for what I wanted it for, which was a reference point for setting up the wheel tub here to give us an approximate, if not exact, line up of this wheel tub. Obviously, the wheel tub's come off. That's a new sill, as you know. So there could be discrepancies in the way that the entire thing fits together. Things are going to have moved. You know, we're not. This isn't a body shop. You know, this is just. The best I can do so for a fighting chance I've kept this shelf and as you know I picked the welds out look see there and that tub's not changed I'm not going to change that tub yet so what I'll do is fit the shelf back on the tub in exactly the same place it it was I can either clamp it or put a spot weld on it then we know that when the shelf was on the car, it, it, uh, we, we can level the chassis up. Sorry, I'll say that again. If we level the car chassis and floor pan with a spirit level across, like, like was done earlier on, there's a spirit level there. What we, need, what we aim for then is to get the parcel shelf level. So, if the wheel tub's too low down, then obviously it'll throw the level out, but if the wheel tub's in the right place, and this is sitting on the wheel tub as it will do, well, not this one, but the donor roof and, and the donor shelf. It means that your tub, your wheel tub, is somewhere in the right position. So that's what we're trying to do with this. Um, there's some implications with the boot and things like that, of course, because this can actually laterally twist, and you could be out there. That's important to get that right. Obviously, I'm using this for the height, setting of the height of the tub only forward and backward movement of the tub isn't going to be possible because it's determined by the sill there so forward and backwards is, is set by the sill there's no moving it now if it's in the wrong place i.e. if the sill's in the wrong position I'm going to be stuffed I don't know what I'm going to do because there's no there's no room for error there 
um, everything's set by that so um, what I'm going to do the whole thing needs marking up everything needs marking up because this wheel tub affects everything so we need to make sure that everything's right so we're going to use a combination of pop rivets spot welds I'm going to have to fit the door on and I'm going to have to satisfy myself that the door runs parallel with this tub in terms of the wheel, the curve of the wheel arch. If it does look reasonably parallel, then I'll satisfy myself that we're, we're close to the target. There's another panel I can fit on here actually, the door slam shut panel catch. We could clip that on and that'll give us an idea too of the forward and backward position. There's not much indication on the parcel shelf to you know twist it, how I know that it's exactly square with the car except by doing measurements from the front of the parcel shelf here to the to the front pillars of the car that's one possibility to the B post that'll give us an idea as well because hopefully the B posts they haven't moved since the parcel shelf was taken off so by taking the measurement from there to the B post we can then reposition the parcel shelf in its exact orientation it was when it was removed and then therefore follow the tub height that's all I can do is adjust the tub height. There's not much else I can do simply because it fits into that arch. But it's going to help anyway. It's going to give me an idea. I might just save a few millimetres of wrong adjustment by mocking this up now. Uh, okay, so that's what I'm on with. Uh, I'll just guide you through that and tell you what I was doing. Get some still shots now. And then I'll resume with fitting the, uh, the, condition, the reconditioned, sorry, the repainted uh, chassis leg got the measurements for that so I'll be getting that in position but it's it's time to start you know jostling everything and, and, and familiarizing yourself and it'll quickly come to shape you'll be absolutely amazed how quick that when you put the other tub on and you put the other chassis leg on once those two chassis legs on and the two tubs are on and I can drop that roof in place you, it just becomes a car again it's it's amazing how much of it is in the mind I've discussed this with a few people and it's people say oh there's nothing left of the car but I mean already by just sitting that shelf on you it starts to look like a car again I know in my mind that, that by doing this once that roof's on you'll just think oh that's the car again so it is very deceiving uh, the work itself is actually not difficult because you're dealing with large large bulky parts which quickly just fill the space rather than fiddly little jobs on the sills, in the sills, and trying to graft in a bulkhead. This is going to come together very, very quick once all the alignment is there. You'd be, you'd be surprised. And, and that's what you've got to think about when you're doing a project, is the fiddly little things are what takes up the time. And your big stuff can have a massive impact very quickly, which then helps you in terms of your, um, your commitment to the project and uh, your feelings about the project. And... How you you know you you feeling about getting moving on because you can get you down of course and you can have these slow points where you just that you don't want to carry on or you just call it a day for that day you know and then you get you've got to get back into it the next day well getting on with the uh, alignments and doing your your large your large panels like this like the, the parcel shelf there on the roof give you a big boost and keep you on, get you on your way again and you, you think oh it, it is all right. Because sometimes you can feel like you're at the point of no return. You're never going to get out of it, you know, or you're your nose diving. But the key is if you've got the panels and the right measurements and you've done everything, there's no reason why you can't just uh, keep on going. So uh, what I'll do, that's the lecture over with. I'll uh, set this up on the tripod, do some still shots now for the website. That's over and out for now. Alright, I just wanted to turn the radio down. We've got a different radio today. We're on old school. I'm on AM. And it's a lot better sound than that shitty digital radio. Tinny piece of junk. It's more like it. Old school retro. Anyway. I'm in, I'm, I am making this video from inside the boot area of a Mark III Cortina. GXL 1971 aka PNO 922K or Papa uh, oh I don't even know the, 
Papa November Oscar 922K4 don't know what K is for K Kilo K K K K Kiwi is it maybe anyway as you know you, I left you just before uh, mocking up these panels now what I'm trying to do is check that the wheel tub goes in the right position that is the main objective today because you can see that if the wheel tub was an inch too low look where that passage would then sit either an inch too high or an inch too low so what I needed to do was get this chassis the floor pan level with a spirit level of course uh, get you that now so watch this is, this is the theory the do-it-yourself theory look at that bubble there Um, supposed to focus that. Will she, won't she? Anyway, you can see the bubble. Okay, so that's straight. Well, the bubble's touching the right hand dot, so I'm going to look at this just to make sure that spirit level's sitting. Yeah, this isn't quite. Right, so on the edge of that, because there's a few little ripples, little ripples in this. So you can't sort of get an average. Right, so that's there. I've jammed it level with a block of wood to the floor, so that's going to stay sat straight for now. Then what we do, pop the spirit level. Oh, hold on while I get out of the boot. Onto a flat area of the parcel shell and check that that's level as well. Now you can see the bubble is slightly to the left, so you've got a discrepancy there. There we go. Just got to, it just depends where you put the level, there might be something on it. Just make sure you're on a straight, straight bit there. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll photograph this. And I'm going, to I'm going to compare the bubbles because it's hard to visualise it. So let's just stop. And all right, we've done that with the level, and that all works out great. So what we've got is we're happy that your, level, your spirit level's there. Bubble in the middle. Take it down here. Stick it onto there. Bubble in the middle. So chassis level. So that parcel shelf and that are level. It, which means that if I fitted that wheel tub in there now. When I fit the replacement roof, there's enough movement for me to get the replacement roof sitting just exactly where I need it on the tub. It looks like we've got a good five mil to play with there by pushing the shelf up and down on, on this. You can move it on there, you can move it a little bit there, you can jig it into position just how you need. So that tub is massively, massively critical. Uh, and. The way that it all works is that your tub fits into this sill here. I'll just clamp that up for you now, hold on. I can re release this. So a lot of clamps holding that on, just to get an idea. So, sorry about these shaky camera. Go in there like that. Bring that up. Clamps are giving way now. So you clamp that up. That get that fits there. So obviously it's got to pull in a little bit more. So there's your curve. Edge of the sill up and around we go. Meets the wing. Wing's got a dent on it. Don't worry about that. It actually wants to go slightly back that wing. If that uh, striker panel there sits in there, and then the wing then fits over the wheel tub you get that double lip which is where they all rot because you get the muck and moisture trap behind here and that's why your arches rot out because there's that cavity between the wheel tub 
and the outside of the arch but that's fitting snugly into there as you can see that so everything's in line so that's all correct with plus or minus you know I mean it's not going to be perfect um, the body shop will be putting the back wing on anyway and they'll move it around I just want to get the the wheel arch in position and obviously the roof and the parcel shop is what I'll be doing they'll be doing the back wings uh, the boot floor will be next after I've done the chassis obviously got that other chassis leg to do and this one to, to weld on so I'm going to go under the car now take all this mock up off because I'm satisfied that it's it's in the ballpark mark where that tub is now because the tub's coming off in a minute so we'll just mark that up with some marks paint and we can say yep yeah, that fits that's how it works there's not a lot of movement in the tub really the sill's dictating it here where it intersects but obviously with this sill being replaced I could have easily put the sill in out in which case this would move accordingly just to fit there's a couple of mil everywhere on it um, I'm hoping that if it's out a mil or two one way that I'm going to be out a mil or two the other way and they're going to balance each other out with any luck but I mean it's comes together um, and you know nothing doesn't fit you can already see that starts to look like the car if you look uh, it's, you know, it's amazing how quick you can get it back it starts to resemble the car again so that's where I'm at with that and I'm not putting oh you can see why I'm not putting the roof on but you know look how easy it is for us to work on this area with the roof off it's just so much easier now I can get that chassis rail on I can patch all this back in and look how fast it'll all come together as well which is the, the great thing for me you know um, just you can make some real speed here now not that I'm gonna rush it of course but you know you can see the light if you will uh, that shelf is the original shelf I could use that shelf but there's no point because the shelf's already connected to the roof outside it's all one unit it's just gonna drop in why make loads of work um, plus there's some rot on that shelf anyway so I think that'll get the bullet but we know everything's right you know spot welds there line up with those spars and the spars come down and, and fit perfectly where it fits there and then that's flush against that tub so we know everything's right okay so that's it for now we'll, uh, we'll get under there and, and get this chassis leg on get back to where we were with the chassis leg so that was a good mock-up exercise right back to the chassis leg we go right, I've stripped all that back off so I'm back onto the chassis leg so we're lying upside down under the car and I'm referring to my data sheet now to get the distances between the, the two chassis legs so it's tape measure out we're going to do the front first and lock it in place and then the back I'll put it on the jack there so I can move it around and as you can see it's not quite fitting up to the floor but that's because when I took the old one off I bent the floor a little bit so a bit of bashing a bit of clamping and we get it so we look at our look at our measurement we're looking for a measurement of 890 mil so tape measure out 890 center to center so under I go for the measuring if you want to stay on board it's up to you now, you can switch off if you want, if you get motion sickness, like uh, some people. I'm fine, I'm going under. While we're crawling under the car, we're on bricks, so don't worry, it ain't going to collapse. And anyway, it's only a floor pan, I've got to manoeuvre under it. And now, just there is the hole to measure the centre. Now, if you want to try holding a camcorder and unravelling a tape measure at the same time. Right, I'm hooked on. Get it? Now, centre to centre, or you can go outside lip to outside lip because it gives the tape measure something to hook into, otherwise, you, you're hovering in the middle of the hole so I've just done a bit of a twist and turn and now sliding back and looking for 890 that's if the 
tape measure doesn't now ping off, that's the problem with this. But you get an idea. I'm wogging my arm through, coming right up to the camera now. Okay, you're not going to believe this. I'm glad that was on camera because no one would have believed you. It's 890 exact. Just a damn shame this camera won't focus. Stupid bloody thing. 890, right? Unbelievable. Anyway. Actually, no, it's not because it's 890 on the centre and I actually need to be on the outside edge, so I've got to go across. I thought it was too good to be true. This bloody camera, hold on a second. Anyway, so we'll move the chassis leg now to fit. Let's wish it'd focus. Never mind. So, I'm all right, we're back. Sorry about the delay there. We're nearly finished for Sunday night. Uh, it's been a question of getting the chassis leg to actually fit. Hold on while I just uh, switch down the sound. We've got magic on, a bit more mellow, nice, nice magic FM, uh, magic 1058, I think it was. All right, so we've been using the, as a note, we've been using the measurement sheet. So if you look at this now, that's your back of your chassis legs, 1228.5 mil. All right, that's across bolt, uh, bumper bolt hole to bumper bolt hole. So if I go here, lock that on there like that, cross there like that, and lock it on there. That gives me a hundred and twenty eight one two two eight one two 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 eight. So that's right. So the so gap between the back chassis legs is the same as on there. And I've done the one at the front, which was uh, eight ninety. So I've gone on the front, so the back and the front spacings are correct. So based upon those two measurements. Everything else should be right. It's been a bit difficult to get the chassis to come up into the floor pan because I think the floor pan got distorted when I took the old chassis off because I had to chisel it a little bit. Also, if you remember in earlier videos, that's a new floor down there or a new quarter of the floor and that was grafted in off the Mark IV's floor section along with some other parts and when I've been welding that you'll have got some waving and distortion in the floor so what we've done is used a ball pane hammer and we've knocked we've tapped down all the way along don't need those like this and it gets the final fit so that your your holes are coming up ready to take the welds We'll be clamping and welding soon. I'll start from opposite ends and work my way in. So that's ready for a weld. That's good. And that will make the chassis job done. And then we'll have to do the other side, of course. We might spin the car around for that. I don't know if I'm going to, I might fit the wheel tub next. Um, chassis on, then put the tub back on, mock the whole lot up again with that back parcel shelf you saw over there get the spirit level on it again and double check and double check it all again and get some some um, I don't know if I should put pop rivets in the wheel tub or whether I should just put a couple of tacks in it for now drill the pilot holes out ready and then if it all looks good when the roof goes on then weld everything up so I'll probably do the same but I think for this um, should I weld them all or not or just a few holes I don't know what to do maybe I should just put some tacks in then put the axle back on but for the axle I need new bolts and new void bushes and things so also I had another idea of rebuilding the axle whilst I'm here now just doing the axle rebuild take it off clean it
get it all painted up and actually fit it on when I get the other chassis leg on so the actual job's done all cleaned up and painted I think I'll do that may as well so that's giving us more work and more jobs um, more background work so you're not going to see any big body works in the next few days while I'm cleaning the axle up so I think that's what I'll do um, for now I'm going to wrap up uh, call it a day and I think I'm really happy with today's progress Sunday's progress because I kind of like know where I'm heading now the, the grey areas are getting less and less and the rust is just disappearing if you look I've chased it into that corner now on earlier videos I talked about ch chasing the rust out you know what I mean it's sort of pushing it out so I've pushed it back and pushing it back it's I've pushed it into that far corner now the rot um, and the new metal and the new panels just slowly encroaching as it spreads across if you remember if you follow the uh, history of the rebuild it's been like a spread of metal out from the, in the middle outwards uh, now it heads towards the back with a nice solid chassis at the back so really good progress today um, and uh, I'll resume Monday evening ok so we're calling it a day that's the end for Sunday night locking off, clocking off Saturday the 10th of March 2012 chassis is now uh, the over axle chassis piece is all now set up I've taken all the measurements and it's correct from the back of the chassis leg to the front of the chassis leg across all measuring up uh, as should on the diagrams 890 front section across the opposite side and then 1228.5 back of the chassis leg across to the back of the other chassis leg so all the centres are correct welding torches on just getting the mask now and we're ready to go all right i've clamped everything here let's just get that screen on there for you i've clamped everything up put a couple of tacks in already and then i've just been i've had to tap lightly just to get it to fit there's been some damage to the floor when we put the other one off but we're basically we're there now so the weld's going to go in Okay, your, your welds are in. There we go. So we'll check for get a good penetration underneath. Make sure the welds gone through, which it has. You can see how the welds come through the other side of the chassis, giving us what we need. So that's that. So that's on. What I've done now, I've blocked up the back of the uh, over the chassis uh, axle floor pan bit there. I've chopped that up, got that level with the spirit level. I've leveled it now that the chassis is on. I've put a block under the new chassis and put that on bricks and leveled that. So the floor pan is rock solid. 
you can jump on that, it's solid as rock, and then you, your spirit level, there the bubble in the middle, so that's, that's level, and then we're going to be putting on that back parcel shelf again, and offering up the wheel to once I finish dressing these welds, so we've got the, uh, the die grinder running, what we do with the die grinder is... See how that works, you get that effect. Okay, and then we skim those up, tidy that up, and then that'll just blend in then once the die grinder's done its job. So we'll do a little bit of that now. Okay, so we're continuing to die grind there, cleaning everything up, ready for the fill, for the skim of the filler. Die grind in there, everything all right. The reason we use this as opposed to the grinding disc, you can use a grinding disc, but look, you can get in there like that, and the grinding disc can start cutting. You know, when you slip or when you uh, you just can't help yourself, but just get the wheel and it just get up the cuts anyway. This it's a bit more accurate. Look. We've used it before, it doesn't seem to be going blunt and it's had some serious use, well I say serious use, it's had a good old whack on, no signs of it going um, blunt, so I think that's going to last the whole job, if not beyond, maybe they never go blunt. So I'll carry on die grinding these now, and then you'll see me skim that in, and then uh, I'll be lining up the wheel, so as, as I said, we've gone for the spirit level, on there, we go for it across the sill and make sure that again as we did earlier that the chassis is level needs a little bit of leveling up this now just to make sure you get it actually on the sill properly and just down at the front a little bit so we'll be chocking up at the front as well maybe that edge is the best way to get it you see that bubble it's just wants to come up a quarter of an inch up at the front get the car sills level so we'll do that, there must be a bit of settlement on the chassis probably, as it crushes that chassis, the rusty chassis crushes, you lose a little bit of your um, level. So you keep, keep your eye on the level, make sure it's level all around, and then we'll be bringing in the parcel shelf again, dropping it on top and then bringing that wheel tub up, and then fixing it in position, hopefully that'll be alright. Alright, an update for you, there's a special update centre. I have put the, look at that, I've put the old parcel shelf back on the one we kept if you remember in earlier videos those spot welds were drilled that's the reason why we saved it so we could see how it rests on here same on that side it's now back because that's the uh, same wheel tub so nothing's moved over there so we know that's back in position so we look on the spirit level for a level uh, bubble which we've got right in the middle parallel with that bubbles in the same position on there so them two relatively are the same which is what the objective is for that so by sitting that on there with the wheel tub at that height we can um, we can assume that it's in the well not assume because that's not a good word is it but we've got a fighting chance that that's in the right place there's not much you can do with the wheel tub, it does dictate itself to a degree because of this arch at the front. Uh, so, really what I'll do is about four spot welds on that tub to hold it in place. And then um, we are working on the boot, boot floor. I'll take you around to the boot floor. Obviously there's only half of it there because we've chopped 
away on that. So there's your inside of the tub area. The boot floor will of course fit around that edge there. And then there you are on that side, you can see that that's sitting exactly as it did when it was taken off. So that is the wheel tub's height, correct. We can try and move it a little bit to see if it makes any difference. But I'm thinking that that's the right position, so we could mark that now. And we could put welds on that if we wanted to, and have that in position. And next job of course is to do the chassis on this side. And then once that chassis is done and that wheel tub, it's the turn then of that wheel tub. We then mark this um, with those spot welds there, then this then becomes the template for that side. So that's how we're going to do it. Pull back there, let's take some still shots now and then we'll move on with it. Alright, I've put some rivets in to hold this wheel tub in place first for a mock up. As you can see there's a rivet there onto that, checking the level still, keeping it checked underneath there. Stuck a rivet in. Can take this can take this off now this clamp if it's on there take that off so that's in position there and what we're doing I'm gonna offer up there's the new quarter panel that's gonna go on now I'm gonna see how it looks but first I've just got to prep the area of the old um, parcel shelf now I'm not gonna use this but I want to just learn how they go together so when I do the, the donor roof I'll be able to get it right. So it looks like we've got lead here, so we melt that off. There goes your lead now. Okay. Now we'll get the, the brush. See this come out. You can see your join there. So what I'll do now, obviously drill those off, then I'll peel this back, that's part of the wing, so that bit's on there, you see. So we're going to offer the wing up and then clamp it, on, I'm going to clamp it on that, just got to get this, get this liquid off. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, get them drilled. I'll move this, it looks like, look, it, the wing goes up the roof here, look. There you are. On that edge, that's your wing, I think, isn't it? I think it is. Looks like it. Yeah, I think the wing has, let's have a look over here. Does the wing have that, the windscreen rubber lip? Yeah. 
Uh, no. Uh, no, I don't think it does. What does it? Is that the edge of the windscreen? Yeah, that's the edge of the windscreen, isn't it? The rear, the rear windscreen is that edge. So I'll have to take them spot welds out, remove that, and then I want my wing to sit on in position on this template. This is a great jig template, you see. So that's all going to work out. So let's strip that back now and I'll fold that back. Here we go. Yeah, just mocking it up there. I've put the panel on now. Let's see how that fits into that slot. And that clamps to that inner edge there. So that's your, that's your wing and how it fits. If that was the parcel shelf I was going to use, and that's how you'd be fitting it up. There's a new that new striker panel there slots into there. That fits behind that edge. So you've got that and that. Well, everything seems to be in the right place. I can't see anything out. Um, there's a couple of things that need sort of squeezing in and pushing in a little bit, but nothing uh, untoward. Nothing that just wouldn't be sort of squashed and pulled in. So it looks all okay. I'll keep on going. I'll keep on adjusting it and having a look and just. But I don't think there's any need to move the wheel tub. Them rivets there have held it in position while I've mocked everything up. And that's how the parcel shelf would sit on. So if I was to attach that wheel tub in position now, I would think that it would be in the right place, you know. Um, parcel shelf's going to land on it there. The parcel shelf is level. You've crossed member, but across the axles is level on the spirit. That's level on the spirit. So they're relatively correct. So. I don't know, as, as you, as, and you, you're resting on the wheel tub over there, okay. So that's where we're at there, really. Um, yeah. Basically, just making sure that the wheel tub is the right place, because a lot revolves around that. Um, it fits on this lip, too, here. And it's, fitting, it's following that, okay down at the bottom it's meet, met perfect so that's it I think I'm right there not bad so we'll call that a day for Saturday daytime we'll, uh, finish off and we'll start again tomorrow Sunday the 11th of March we'll carry on with the rebuild over and out for now